Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back. If you're returning, we talked about Tana and her allegations against Cody Co. Today, however, we're going to be talking about the other co-host of the podcast, Cancelled, Brooke Schofield. Long story short, Brooke dated somebody over a period of time and come to find out, allegedly, he lied about a whole bunch of stuff and I think he was promoting a new album that he was putting out and he ended up saying something about Brooke basically not being able to keep her mouth shut. So Brooke saw this as an opportunity to not keep her mouth shut and expose a lot of the creepy things that he did during the course of their relationship allegedly. I'm just gonna kind of eat my dinner and react to all of her TikToks as she posted. Not like a Risa Tisa 10 minute 50 part series, although I'm kind of debating on revisiting that one because that was a really good series. Curious is the leftovers from the mall. I got some rice and beans and rotisserie chicken. Anyway, it has now been two years since we've broken up and he had the nerve to post a TikTok today saying that I cannot let it go and i just want to go on record and say no fucking shit. and his new song comes out on friday and the man will do anything to get a stream so honestly you guys do him a service he needs money for therapy nothing else away from this story just know that treating um underlying mental health conditions is very important because had i known what was wrong with me i would have never gone near that man to begin with no, seriously, part one, who the fuck did I marry? Um, I am trying to be a little bit less psycho on TikTok because obviously I had my little meltdown the other day and that was probably like enough for this week. But when I opened my phone today to a million texts from all my friends of this TikTok that Clinton Kane had posted, what did he say? He said like, when I've been over the relationship for two years and she just can't stop yapping about it, which first of all, hilarious. Like, no shit, I can't stop yapping but the nerve now obviously we broke up two years ago that was a very very different time in my life i was first of all unmedicated okay and that is a very very important factor in this story because i get so many comments that are like brooke what on earth were you going through and i agree i really don't know that was a different girl i was bamboozled now i get a lot of comments about his appearance and the way he shakes okay <laughs> and those are two things that i'm gonna leave off limits for my story time because i feel like that's low-hanging fruit and it's obvious it doesn't even need to be addressed what's shaking does he do does he do something weird i don't know her ex at all but i'm not sure what she means <laughs> believe it or not that was not even really the problem the fact of the matter is i ended up in a relationship with this man because i was a fan honestly I knew of him because of his music. I loved his song, Chicken Tendies, or whatever. Brooke, I'm, you fell in love with him. <laughs> it's, wait, Chicken Tendies? I need to go on YouTube real quick and like look up this song. I don't think I've ever heard that song before. I mean, it's a good song. It has like five million vo views on YouTube. Tana and I would literally blast it on a loop at our old house and like we were obsessed with it, okay? So randomly one day I get a DM from this artist, it's Clinton Kane. And I remember telling Tana like, oh my God, like how funny he just messaged me. And he starts just like asking me questions, whatever. And he asks if I wanna go to dinner. I'm looking at his profile and I don't know if I wanna go to dinner, okay? Not everybody has to be everybody's type. I'm not everybody's type. She's not everybody's type. Clinton's not everybody's type. I'm replying anyway and he asks, he's like, what about tomorrow? I'll fly you to Vegas. What the fuck? I didn't know he lived in Vegas. So I say no, and that's the end of that. Like I said, he lived in Vegas, so I obviously was not gonna go to dinner with him because he's a stranger, but he persisted, all right? Of course, of the next few months, he would slide up on all my stories, message me constantly. Some would call him obsessed, honestly, but what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna fly to meet a stranger. But one day I get a DM where he says, hey, I have a show tomorrow in LA, like, would you wanna come? And again, I loved his music, so I was like, absolutely. I will definitely come because it's like, that's so much less pressure. I don't wanna go to dinner with this man. Like, I wanna see the show. So I ask Bibi to come with me and we get ready to go. Remember so specifically the outfit that I wore because again, this guy has been messaging me so much online that I'm like, I know he like loves me. So I wore, 
the ugliest outfit you could find like bb knows i said it to her i was like i just want like to look as unattractive like to him as possible because i just don't want that to be the vibes all right she and i go to dinner and we go to the show it's amazing okay he was amazing i don't know what's happened since then but he was slaying at the time after the show we go upstairs i think he was at like el rey theater or something and everybody's like mingling a few of my friends were there i remember Sin cover were there markel was there my, one of my best friends justin horowitz was there like i was like mingling with friends and he like came over to me and started talking to me whatever and we like hit it off and i'm gonna tell you guys something that you might not believe but he looked really good honestly he was way taller than i thought and he had a really cool outfit on and i was like you know what he's not as bad as i thought he was okay <laughs> I think she was a little blinded by the infatuation of like the, the, the music and the trips and stuff. Okay. So we end the night. I go home. Nothing happens. And he texts me after the show and he's like, would you want to come back tomorrow? And I had an amazing time. I like loved the show. So I was like, you know what? I'll go back. Amari also loved his music. So I texted Amari and I was like, would you want to come? Would you want to come? No, what the heck was that? We're not gonna just glaze over the poltergeist. Would you want to come with me to see Clinton Kane tomorrow? And whatever. I bring Amari the next day. Same show. We do the same thing after. And then Amari and I go back on his bus. And honestly, we had such a good time. Like, we're like cracking up on the bus. We're with a bunch of friends. Amari's having the best time. I'm having the best time. He's funny. He's cool. He's like charismatic. I'm like, you know what? Like, maybe maybe he's not that bad we all get off the bus and go to the club we all get super drunk and me and him end up like making out we're like very much together at the club and that was the start of something very horrible after the club he and i went alone to a little diner in la called Mel's diner it's 24 hours you can go after the club get fries shakes whatever and he and i order literally every single thing on the menu and we sit there for like four hours and just talk this is the point where he tells me about what had happened to him in the year prior this would have been i guess 2020 like during covid he tells me his mom his dad and his brother all died in the same year okay which is fucking horrible like obviously just unimaginable so i'm like blown away i knew that his mom had died because he had openly talked about like how one of his songs was about her and stuff but i had no idea about the rest of his family so i was like holy shit first of all and i feel like i completely changed my opinion about him because i'm like at this point i'm thinking he's just like this weirdo sliding into my dms and now he's very like human to me because i'm so <laughs> If you start dating someone new and they open up and tell you that their whole family has died, I give her grace for not like knowing right away because I, that's a weird thing to lie about. So I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe you could overcome something like that. Like that's insane. This is very important to the story, okay? Because I need you guys to understand how I ended up in this scenario. Then he starts telling me how he got into music. He's telling me how he was homeless and he would backpack around Europe, like literally sleep on benches and busk, like in parks to make money. And he got discovered, whatever. And then obviously I guess I'm in love came out and he was really successful from that song. But I'm just looking at this guy. Like I have never met anybody like you because first of all, I could never be touring a year after like that kind of extreme tragedy first of all second of all you would never catch me dead sleeping on a bench on purpose so i was like this guy's really like special so we had this whole night at this diner we talked forever and i got to know a lot about him okay he told me all about how he had grown up in australia in perth australia he talked about how he grew up like super wealthy in like an eight bedroom house on the beach in australia his mom was a pastor he said she was a pastor at Hillsong United. Hillsong? Hillsong? He studied medicine, which I loved because I was like technically pre-med when I was in college also. I didn't graduate, but it doesn't matter. So I was like, oh my God, we have that in common. Like this is like a really well-rounded, like amazing guy. And like I said, he doesn't live in LA. So the next night he calls me and he's like, listen, I have a date planned for us. I'm picking you up at eight, whatever. And he does. Okay, we go on this date 
It's like a beautiful restaurant, whatever. We have the best time. We talk forever. We go to the beach, yada, yada. I go home. And the next day, he calls me and he says, I am so sorry and I'm so afraid to tell you, but I just got on set for my music video and I tested positive for COVID. Obviously, I had just like had this whole extravagant date with him the night before i would 100 percent have covid we were like making out on the beach the whole night which is like traumatizing but true okay so i'm like this man gave me covid and he's like there's nothing i can do i'm so sorry but like obviously we both have it so i'm quarantining at the one hotel Brooke, no one hotel if you want to come and stay with me so i was like i mean like like i have covid now i have two roommates like guess i gotta go i don't know again unmedicated i show up to the hotel okay and i move in with the man ah! i'm at the one hotel one of the most beautiful hotels in all of los angeles okay it's like several thousand dollars a night for like a nice room his story about being wealthy and well off and Ugh. So I'm living the life. We're ordering room service every night. We're like, we're just having so much fun. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I date this guy. Keep in mind, we are not separating. So I have no opportunity to view his online presence. All right. Because that is another really important factor to the story. Because had I seen the shaking that was occurring, I might have thought differently. Okay. But he's in person he's really normal he's charismatic he's australian he's a beautiful musician he's, he's singing to me and playing guitar every night i'm like you know what i'm falling for him she was swooned okay it was romantic i'll give it i'll give the guy at least a little bit of credit that he probably really was romantic at some moment as more time passes we eventually move to like an airbnb in marina del rey because he wanted to be by the beach and so we go over there and this man is not allowing me to go home okay this was the first major red flag like if i had a morning where i was like okay like i want to go home and like get new clothes and shower and like just be a human and be alone for a second he would immediately like shut down like why don't you want to be with me why would you want to go home can i come with you like just very strange and i did not like that a normal person would have seen this as like a big major like no in a relationship okay but i am not a normal person so i was like if he wants to be with me all the time he is obsessed with me of course i can see that going both ways like if somebody you start dating and you're sort of in that honeymoon i could see you wanting to spend as much time with them as possible i was not there so i can't say for sure what happened if he was actually stopping her that's a problem if he was making her feel bad about leaving and coming back that's also a problem but i'm wondering if it was more like a he just really wanted her to stay so it kind of seemed desperate fortunately i believed it was a good thing at the time and i had a bunch of people in my ear i had like mutual friends like zach sang was a really important one too okay we were all hanging out together all the time and when clinton like maybe wasn't around i would have these people in my ear like brooke if you do not date this man you are so stupid like first of all he's gonna be huge he's so talented he's so special he has like the most amazing story like you have to date him first of all he's gonna be huge he's first of all he's gonna be huge again i feel like that's so bad. i don't blame brooke personally but it's like i also feel like that's part of the reason that she was able to be swayed so easily because i don't think she was being honest with herself either it really is not really making any either of them look very good i will get into clinton's response but it is brooke admitting to us she wasn't attracted to him but basically thought that he could be famous and provide her the lifestyle that she was enjoying because she was getting a little taste of it with room service and should i shut up i can feel bad to an extent but aren't you also kind of using him a little bit at least at the moment i i i love brooke i love brooke i love the cancel podcast i'm not trying to but you also can't get m mad at somebody when it just kind of seems like you were also using him because he had this really popular song he's bringing you on 
trips. He's so talented. He's so special. He has like the most amazing story. Like you have to date him. Okay. And one thing about me is I'm easily influenced. So I start dating the man. I think a lot of it was her friends whispering in her ears being like, he's going to be successful. He's going to be so big someday. And in turn, she ended up starting to see this lifestyle that maybe she desires, which isn't a bad thing. You can desire any sort of lifestyle you want as long as it's not hurting somebody else. But she's openly admitted to us several times that um, Clinton wouldn't necessarily be someone that she would just like date based off of attractiveness. It took him sharing his music and doing these trips and room service and it even took friends to be in Brooke's ear to almost convince her like yeah maybe I kind of like him we are now in a committed relationship all right and one thing about Clinton is he loved to go on a trip all right he wanted to get me as far away from everybody else as possible so this time it was Joshua Tree he's like let's go to Joshua Tree let's just spend the weekend It'll be so relaxing, amazing, whatever we can work. Can we go back to what she said for a second? One thing about Clinton is he loved to go on a trip, all right? He wanted to get me as far away from everybody else as possible. Let's say that one more time. He wanted to get me as far away from everybody else as possible. Far away from everybody else as possible. In my opinion, Clinton is showing um, some traits of maybe some controlling or manipulative. Oh, I've got COVID. You need to quarantine with me. Let's go on trips. Let me get you as far away from everybody else as possible. That's a really odd thing to say unless Clinton has insinuated that or maybe said that on a trip like I want to get you away from everybody does he really mean like I just want to get you away from everybody and go on a nice trip or is he more so trying to isolate her either way I'm glad that she's out of this relationship so this time it was Joshua Tree he's like let's go to Joshua Tree let's just spend the weekend it'll be so relaxing amazing whatever we can work great Joshua Tree National Park. It's in California. Joshua Tree is home to the world famous rock formations, funky Josh trees, and a rich diversity of plants, animals, and human history. With stunning desert vistas and seemingly endless days of sunshine, the park attracts over 3 million visitors per year. There are a variety of activities and sites to experience, so it's just like a national park. Okay. On the way there, we get pulled over. In his car, he drove a Model X at the time, and... A Model X looks like a luxury vehicle. Oh, it's a Tesla? How much does it go for? The price of a 2024, again, I don't know the year of his Model X, but they start at 79000 and goes up to 94000 He has the cars, he's got the story, he's got the hotel so far. When the cop asked for a license and registration, he gave his license, his Australian license, and he gave the registration to the car, which was not his, not his car. So I thought that was strange. And then the cop is like reciting his information back to him. And he says, you were born in 1999. And I am under the impression that my boyfriend is a year younger than me. Okay. And this would make him like four years younger than me. I'm like, that's really strange, but we keep going and I ask him about it and he's like, oh, like, that's a fake ID. I just like, I got it mixed up. We got lucky. And I'm in my head like, that doesn't happen, but whatever. It's so hard to see when you're actually in the relationship, how many red flags can come up and how willing we are to sweep so much under the rug because we care about this person. You lied about your age, you lied about the car even being registered to you. Like these are just really strange things to be lying about. Also, who has a fake ID to appear younger? Anyway, we go to Joshua Tree and we have this whole little trip, whatever. We we're sorry my netflix just started playing on me and we have this whole little trip whatever we were barbecuing and hot tubbing and having this whole little couple's vacation okay and everything is going perfect until the nighttime all right and this is when we had our first major blowout fight i always say to never go on a trip with anybody that you're dating within like the first six months because nothing i mean nothing is worse than being stuck somewhere with someone you're not getting along with this is a very important turning point because our entire relationship was blowout fights okay but what's important about them is that they were 
literally out of thin air, okay? So this one was because we're eating our dinner that we made and I am looking at my phone. Keep in mind, we're not, I'm not at a family dinner. We are on a couple's retreat where we have spent every single second together for the past 48 hours. Why would I not be allowed to look at my phone? I understand both sides of that story. I'm very much a person that if I'm out with somebody or I'm out with my family, I do not want you guys on your phone. Now, if you take a glance at it real quick, I'm not going to be the police of your phone and tell you what to do. However, I really do love connection with people that I'm sitting with. And I feel like that when they're on their phone, they are ignoring me. So I could see if Clinton asked her to put it away and if she kind of got a little like, about that but also she should be able to check her phone without him questioning it or wanting her to constantly put away based off of the controlling behavior that we are starting to see from him that's a little more concerning this is when he proceeded to tell me it's a major trigger of his for someone to not pay 100 percent attention to him at dinner time because that's what his mom used to do to him. i wasn't there to see the context and how he delivered that message i don't know how true it is based off of everything else he's lied about but it sounds like he is opening up to something that it sounds like maybe he was at the dinner table with his mom a lot and just kind of wanted that connection and she was like constantly on her phone or constantly ignoring him so that can really mess with someone's psyche so i really don't blame him if he is looking for a girlfriend that will show him attention at the dinner table and his mom was very neglectful he had a horrible relationship with her and it was really traumatic obviously everything is unresolved since she has died and so anything that reminds him of his mother is a no and he went insane i tell you i have never seen a man like just pout and throw like a literal tantrum this way i was like how do i undo i cannot be in a relationship with this man part seven you guys he said she can't stop yapping i'm like i will show you yapping so we just had our first major major blowout fight all right and this is when i first found out like how he behaves in an argument and i'm, I'm not trying to take anybody's side here i'm honestly trying to see both points of views all she said was that he got upset because he asked her to put her phone away because it reminded me, reminded him of the neglect that his mom would do on him. But she never mentions what she says after. Did she put her phone away? Or does she say like it's not a big deal? For someone to get that upset and for there to be like a big blowout fight, I feel like there's a little bit of context missing in that first argument. I'll be watching Clinton's video as well to see if he talks about that argument at all, but I just thought it was interesting. She sort of glazed over that. In an argument, which was like a child. Like literally you could not talk any sense into him. It was so irrational and it was just like, like you could not get through to him. There was no like compromise. It was like, you just had to apologize even though he was so unbelievably wrong every single time. Oh my god, it was infuriating. And the overwhelming common theme of all of our arguments was that I was worsening his trauma and he can't believe that I'm so insensitive to everything that he has been through. I remind him so much of his mother who was so horrible to him and I should be way more sensitive to everything that he is going through. And that's not on Brooke. Clinton would need some serious therapy to work through the trauma that was brought onto him during his childhood. Brooke should not be the one responsible for basically making up for the emotional distress that his mother caused him. But I believe Clinton might be going into relationships, almost trying to replace that void in his life of a caring feminine figure. And when he's getting those eerily similar situations that remind him of things his mom did, it immediately brings him back to a place. Again, not Brooke's responsibility. And of course, I'm like, I get that. You know what I mean? Like the man lost three family members in one year i'm like he is going through a lot so i have to give him like a little bit of grace but it became a situation where i felt like i was like mothering this man and like if i did anything wrong or if i like literally split my attention for even one second he went ballistic because he was like a little infant baby child i want to be sensitive to his situation but it was so it was like way too much for me to handle because i'm already you guys know i'm emotionally unstable okay and i 
have no business fixing whatever was like seriously very wrong with him. I would go out with my friends. Like I remember one night I was at dinner with Tana and he's blowing me up, like literally sending me novels about how he drank an entire fifth of vodka. He's going to drive. I need to get to him right now or he's going to do crazy things. Like it was just so manipulative. And I, and I just like, I was not equipped from what i've seen brooke has a really big heart so she doesn't want to hurt him as well but she's not equipped brooke should not be put in this position where she has to be not only this man's girlfriend but his mother and his therapist part eight i think i am honestly not sure i'm just trying not to spare you any details so i'm in my relationship with my little baby man child and he still lives in vegas okay so we are technically in a long distance relationship but we never separate so Either I'm in Vegas staying with him or he is living with me. Or we'd get like an Airbnb in Marina Del Rey, whatever, it doesn't matter. We are never separating. And at this time, his album was about to come out, okay? So like he was doing the whole rollout. He was like really getting in the zone. And I was just constantly there for like all the work that he was doing. The promotion of the album, the exciting new music, maybe the recording. She got a little taste of this lifestyle. So I think she was more willing to overlook all these red flags and the blowout fights that were starting about the trauma from his childhood and whatnot. And this album was special because it was his first piece of work that he was putting out since everything had happened and since everyone had died, okay? And the whole album was about that, of course. And as a part of his little press tour, he went on the Zach Sang show, okay? If you are not familiar, Zach Sang is an interviewer. He does like huge celebrity interviews and he gets really deep and talks about like life and music and everything. Zach is also one of his best friends. So Zach like knows his story very well and he does the interview accordingly, okay? He's asking like all the questions about his mom, about the funerals, about his brother, about his dad, everything. And he is answering obviously and he's talking about how he had to attend the funerals during covid and he had to do it via zoom because of like everything that was going on and he is really just going in in this interview in his australian accent and the interview comes out i was staying with him at an airbnb at the time and i posted a tiktok with him in it and in my comments i started getting girls going uh oh like not him and i immediately was like wait what <laughs> and i have a girl tell me like oh by the way he cheated on his ex-girlfriend with literally 15 girls and before this he had told me that his ex who i guess i'm in love is about by the way one of the most beautiful songs ever people use it as their wedding song it's like i mean it's his biggest song he told me that the girl that that was about had cheated on him okay so this was news to me and I asked him about it. I'm like, did you cheat on her? And like it was the most nonchalant thing in the world. He was like, uh, well, yeah. I take back everything I said. Part nine, I'm having so much fun, okay? So we just found out that he cheated on his ex-girlfriend, who I guess I'm in love is about, okay? Beautiful love song. You can't imagine that he could possibly do something bad to her, right? Wrong. He was cheating on her the whole time, all right? And... What I realized when I really looked into it is I was one of the girls. You're the other woman. <gasps> because like I said, he has been messaging me constantly for the last year, like literally sliding up on every single story I post trying to fly me out. When he tried to fly me out to dinner that time, they were actively in a relationship. Because they were like together so often. How did he pull that off? So I'm sick because first of all, I feel like I somehow had like a part in it and I felt disgusting about that and just the fact that like I could never have imagined that he was like capable of doing something like that because of how like romantic he was and like what a love bomber he was I was like I I what on earth do you mean but he's a master manipulator so he's you know he's telling me like I was so removed from that relationship long before we broke up and I should have just called it off and I would never do something like that again and they were long distance like she lived in new york and he lived in vegas so it was like they really didn't spend a lot of time together and like somehow the way that he described it to me made it seem like less bad because that's what master manipulators do and they're so good at it they'll make you believe damn near anything don't ever say you wouldn't fall for it unless you've been in it it was horrible but i didn't let it go and that was at the top of my mind okay 
And again, we're staying together. So the next morning I'm in bed with him when he is on a call with his manager and he is begging his manager, telling him whatever it takes, I need you to have that interview deleted. And he's talking about the Zach Sang interview that I referenced earlier, okay? And I am like, what's going on? I hadn't seen the interview yet, but Zach's one of our best friends. Like I was like, like what could possibly be in this interview that is so bad that he wants it off the internet but you know like clinton's telling his manager like i don't care like just get it down so in bed next to him i get on my little phone and i go to the interview and i start to read the comments and in the comments i see someone write this is really strange i don't know where this australian accent came from he is not Australian. He is from Brunei. I grew up with him. I went to school with him and I saw his mom last week. Part 10, we have reason to believe that he is A, not from Australia, faking an Australian accent, and B, he faked the death of his family. Okay? And like I said, I was still mad about the ex thing, so I staged this whole fight and I get the fuck out of there, which was not easy to do, okay? I don't get to leave, remember? I go home and I get on my computer so fucking fast and I look up his mother, okay, which I've never done before. She has a very specific name and I looked her up on Facebook. She has two accounts, okay? And on neither of them has she posted since the date that she was supposed to have died. In my head, I'm like, okay, it's possible she's dead. But it's also possible that she is not, which like, while she was talking there, I went and I did find the comment she was talking about. It says, I went to school with Clinton and I know for a fact that he grew up in Brunei. We went to a school called, oh my goodness, Suri Mul Oh my gosh, I'm going to butcher that one. For both our primary and secondary education. So, not sure where this Australian accent came from. Additionally, I knew his mom and brother back when I was younger, 15 or 16, and I know for a fact that they are alive and well. So what's going on? Why make uh, such a huge publicity stunt for fame when you could have gotten it with raw talent? No doubt that Clinton has always had a passion for music, etc. What I'm not sure about is why you had to make such a bold move to further your career. Best luck to you, though. Oh my god. It has 2.3 thousand likes. Wow. How do you ever think you're going to get away with something like that? Oh my goodness. Here's the thing, okay? He had told me so many stories about his childhood and his life growing up and told me all about his mom and what she looked like. She was Norwegian and blonde, okay? He would tell me about what his house looked like and how they had nannies and maids and he was so wealthy and his mom would leave for months at a time because she also had like she had all these like crazy businesses in addition to her being a pastor like i don't even know how in my right mind i like did not see right through this but he would tell me all these elaborate stories and now i'm looking at her facebook profile and his life was nothing of the sort okay i i can see the house that he grew up in uh in brunei by the way not at all in Australia, keep in mind, I live, with this, I live with this man and he has a fucking Australian accent. His mom is obviously Asian, as is he, which, like, why would you lie about that? It's such a strange thing to lie about. And just, I could, just everything was fake. So while I can't immediately tell that she is alive, I can tell that he is a extreme pathological liar. Wow, that was a lot to unpack. I definitely want to hear from Clinton. He did admit to cheating. So Clinton, I don't forgive you for that. But I do understand childhood trauma. And I do want to hear his side of the story as well. Let me know what you guys think below. And I'll see you in my next one.